you know, this is nightmarish, uh, and I don't think people realize how serious and significant it is. Uh, the fall of Baghdad is designed to be the bear trap for Russia and Iran to start this big war. And uh, that means that uh, that uh, um, that Muhammad or Ali, uh, who is a devout Muslim, doesn't really want to harm anybody, but he will follow orders. And he's going to get his prayer mat out before this refrigerator in Chicago or Atlanta or New Los Angeles. And he's going to go to the Lyophilized flask in the back, and he's got a, probably a master's level in uh, infectious disease at some university, probably highly qualified. And he'll uh, he'll pull that vial out, and he's going to start spraying it if this war gets going. You're going to see Americans dying like flies from stupor, stupid super weapons caused by our government having an idiot policy thinking that we can whack them, but they can't hurt us. And, of course, the same thing goes with our policy toward dealing with nuclear seismic testing, which shows most of our nuclear reactors can't withstand an earthquake, which we're going to talk about in a minute with Chris Harris, with Fukushima and with WIP reactors in Carlsbad, New Mexico, where we now have a report that Chris sent me. Now, Chris, I'd like rather than seal your thunder, I want you to re read it. Uh, we talked about it briefly earlier about the WIP reactor nuclear site and plutonium-239 actually causing a nuclear explosion and of course the anonymous employees saying they put us in danger. Tell us about the WIP reactor and what's going on there. Well, Dr. Bill, well in the WIP reactor, now, now remember this this, re, this uh, report there was a potential for the plutonium flash which is a criticality event. Uh, I, right. I don't I, I'm like I said, I haven't done the analysis on that myself. So but let's just go uh, talk about what is. What is is that the Department of Energy had a decision to cut back on the uh, the uh, waste isolation pilot plant's safety requirements to save some money, and in that they have also decided to make some changes to the packing material that's used in these. Uh, highly radioactive waste drums, which which contain plutonium salts, and they used an organic material instead of a not or instead of a non-organic material. And uh, in fact, I was just talking it over today with uh, one of my colleagues, who is uh, very esteemed uh, in in waste handling and waste processing. You know, we'll call him Barney for now, but he. Uh, Basically, he says, is that what they did? They put uh, organic material in? That's a hydrogen explosion. And yeah. um, so, you know, in the, in the present... But a hydrogen explosion kind of can trigger criticality. Well, most people don't realize the Krytron switches that, cause, that use uh, C4 plastic, which is what they used to try to detonate the nuclear weapons back uh, in the 1930s and 40s. They were actually using Krytron high-speed flash switches so they could simultaneously detonate and compress the ball of plutonium to create a nuclear explosion or criticality. When you have a hydrogen explosion, you can likewise create criticality. And what it does is it temporarily increases the neutron flux that causes a chain reaction, and that causes an explosion. So that's how it can happen. Hydrogen-triggered plutonium-239 nuclear explosions can be triggered by hydrogen, right? That's right. It all would depend, you know, whether they're going to achieve a critical mass or not. And there's like different categories of the criticality. Yeah, but it may only be partial. Maybe it's not. Right. You know, it's not clean, so it's only like two percent of the total mass of plutonium. But enough flux occurs, you get what's called a neutron flux, and then of course it blows up the bomb and disperses all the isotopes all over Hell's Half Acre. So this is what happened with these kitty litter, these green kitty litter from the Department of Energy and the Obama administration. They went green, all right, but the green unfortunately was like the you know the uh, the goblin from you know Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, the green right. was nuclear. It was bad idea. It was turning these things literally into cooking bombs. Crazy. It, 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 yeah, and, and it didn't have to happen this way. It, right. It's a big, what, what I'm also finding is that uh, what part of the cutbacks? Well, they lost they, they lost track of, of specific drums and their locations in. in in big vaults known as panels. Right. And so you really don't know where all this material is. That well, they didn't properly log it. In other words, they, they didn't log right. the material properly to be able to track it to which ones they modified with the new green kitty litter, did it? No. I, I was, you know what? I was thinking, well, you know, they have they have impeccable records. And it yeah. would be easy yeah. to do. You're hoping. Yeah. You're hoping. Well, I hoping. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I just know the way the way that we do things, and you know, yeah, that, that the way they should be done. It makes sense. It should be done right, and yeah. uh, I guess I was wrong. That it's it's done. Yeah. In a well, more you, you guys are impeccable because you're the safety guys who come in to clean up the mess 
or do a, a proper evaluation. The, that's the next question. <clears throat> The seismic testing here in America with the NRC started by Jazzco before it was replaced because he was opening too many cans of worms. What's happening there? Uh, have they finished their evaluation of all these nuclear plants and said, guess what, they all fail or we're going to study a lot more? Or what, what's the outcome? What's going on with all these nuclear plants? Several have failed outright where there's going to be modifications that have to be made. i got to go ahead and, and write you a synopsis of those so that you right. have an idea. Um, others are... Uh, can be wished away provided that there's enough analysis. Wished away is, a, is I guess that's a term we use where right. you talk about sharpening the pencils and all that. However, uh, it's still, that, that's a lot of work in itself to, to sell that. You know, you have to actually sell, to sell it that, uh, that you are safe because you, you know, you have this much margin of safety in the, in the, uh, in the build right. of your plant. Well, you know that's, well, you need, uh, they that's, should have data, though. I mentioned before they should yep. have uh, soil quality data, data on the structural integrity of welds, uh, crystal data with uh, basically X-ray and ultrasound of all the joints and welds and rivets. Uh, they should know the structural integrity of pipes that might be thinned out. They did a couple of years ago. They're actually trying to use a brush to clean out pipes in a nuclear reactor near Chicago. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the plant. I think we talked about this, and yep. the actual brush went through the pipe. It's like, well, your brush should not go through the pipe. It actually punctured right through the wall of it, trying to clean it out. Yes, it did. That, that was, what plant was that again? I think that was Braidwood. I, you know, that's, that's it, the Braidwood plant, yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, we're trying to build up a kind of a library. And by the way, this will be all in our book, which is uh, going to include all the emails back and forth from Chris, all the analysis, other nuclear experts, uh, plant pictures, Diagrams, everything, and and so we have actual site specific engineering design things that can fix Fukushima. By the way, the other report that I have is that uh, that the uh, ice wall they're really really starting to back off on the ice wall. What's the story there in Fukushima? Okay, once again, I would uh, talk to uh, like I say a colleague of mine who is an expert in the area of of uh, cleanup because he was on the Three Mile Island five mile, Three Mile Island cleanup project and all that. He is a renowned expert. And I said, well, what do you think of this ice wall? He just curled his lip and goes, nah, that's not going to get it. You know, he's, he's, he's that kind of a guy. So, yeah, he's very right. candid and very open. And i got to tell you what, he, he said, what they need is coffer dams that you could pump out from in between the two dams. So it's a coffer dam is actually two dams in a row. And, uh... Actually, that makes a lot of sense to me. And so you could keep you could keep pumping out from in between these, so you build like a big coffer dam around the plant of of a material that's not ice. You, if you know what I mean, it's going to be a more uh, steel. It's going to be a, a real robust structure. And they haven't entertained that yet. But but you're basically they said you're, they're wasting their time with the ice wall. And plus, you know the the, the added uh, negatives of uh, shifting, basically uh, uh, liquefying material, liquefying uh, the the ground around it, where you can cause sinkholes and other. You know, it, believe me, they don't need any more problems than they already have. Right. And they can also create more problems with an ice dam. Exactly, and of course the ice dam was supposed to be above it. They should have used Starlight, which I mentioned. I got the original information from Dr. Ron Klatz, head of A4M. Starlight will withstand 15 to 20,000 degree temperatures. It is radiation resistant, won't crystallize and break down. And if they put a Starlight dam above it, they could divert the water away from the plant. Then they can set a seawall below it, filter that material out, turn it into solid radioactive waste, dispose of it in double hulled ships, taking it away to a zinc mine is the deepest mine possible. What do you do with any of it? It's, it's all poisonous. But... Yeah. Welcome back, and uh, we have more than 50% of the uh, fuel run assemblies transferred. That's 1,034 to 1,533. Um, Chris and Ed, they, they, these fuel run assemblies, they've managed to get the, the easy ones. They're going to have more difficulty with the harder ones. And also the problem is, as you mentioned before, the seal on the, on the overall uh, fuel rod pool, cooling pool number four, the common cooling pool they haven't touched. And of course, the reactors one, two, and three, they really can't touch. So right. th this mess isn't going to go away. And the corium is probably 75 uh, feet at least, or 25 meters below the plant. 
It's generating uh, highly radioactive or tritiated water, which is superheated. Uh, it's generating criticality, which emerges from the ground and shoots neutron beams, which turn the air blue with beams of gamma rays that literally ionize the nitrogen. You can see blue beams above the Fukushima plant in the uh, after sundown. This situation is extremely unstable, and I don't know where they're getting people, but you know, after a period of time, these people get so sick, they have to get new people. I guess the Yakuza and the uh, supply them with enough people willing to do these things that are, in a sense, committing radioactive suicide. Um, we have specific plans that we talked about to fix each of these areas. Uh, and the first thing is a starlight wall above it to divert the water. The second is to put in a, a sealed seawall area below it to catch all the water before it goes out in the ocean. It's also to make sure they use ground penetrating radar and block off all the steam vents that actually are superheated steam driving uh, vented radioactive high, uh, hot tritiated steam out toward the ocean floor that vents radiation across the ocean floor, which they could do with GPR, ground penetrating radar. Um, I think that they need to put underneath these reactors what I call uh, boronated water and then hit it with the scalar frequency of boron and then basically form a super crystalline and dry it out, literally turn it into a crystalline sarcophagus and stop trying to move things. I think that the idea of moving things is dangerous other than the water that they have there, which they could do a multi-stage filter, which would include a uh, sediment, linear charcoal, uh, reverse osmosis, and an ion exchange resin. On a large scale, the system we use for pure water systems, which basically came from industry. And uh, they tried to do this with the ALPS, but the incompetence that were doing ALPS were the same incompetence that did the kitty litter, green kitty litter, that created the, turned the, uh, the, uh, literally into nuclear bombs. <laughs> I can't believe they did this. They turned the, uh, the, the whip reactor storage containers into hydrogen generating bombs that can then compress the, Plutonium-239 and create a partial criticality reaction, literally a nuclear explosion that would blow these containers all over the place. And that's what happened. Um, so, Chris, what's going to happen in Fukushima? What's next? Well, the, in the big picture, they're still getting the uh, advanced liquid processing system uh, running up and running. But, you know, you're also talking about what, what used to be a 10-year projected cleanup that turned into a 20-year and now I'm reading 50-year projected cleanup, you know. Okay. Just, yeah. Yeah, it, I, we're not really making any progress even in the news reports. And when I go over, no. and you can go over, for example, to a, if you go over to Jeff Francis' site and uh, you look at what his latest news reports are, um, it's, I don't see a lot of what I call real progress. I see a lot of hand-wringing. Um, we see the, the West Coast near, near starfish near extinction. No one says rad. Post Fukushima radiation near West Coast rising. Japan new professor uh, R four SPF flooring could go at any time. That's the rea the, the the reactor four uh, pooling cooling pool. The floor could drop, which is what you talked about. The tritium uh, density in bypass well way over limit, which is a bypass well. The bypass water that's coming above the plant. Uh, where there are head wells are going. By the way, were there even before they built Fukushima. Uh, aerial photo shows desolation around Daiichi. Happy Fukushima video. Radiation good for you. Isn't that crazy? Uh, will fracking cause our next nuclear disaster? By the way, fracking, I think, was part of the reason why these uh, plants went, besides the stupid idea that they had to green them, they were fracking, which caused, uh, uh, you know, pumping water and chemicals down around this site, which is literally a quarter, half mile from the whip uh, plant. I think I was, uh, when you have a salt mine, why would you allow fracking? That's so crazy, isn't it? And of course, by the way, fracking here in America is often near nuclear plants. It also can trigger off new earthquakes. We know that the Department of Mines in, in Colorado in the late 80s actually triggered off a four point something earthquake just by pumping in water in the fault lines in uh, 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 up north of Denver. <laughs> In Boulder, I can't believe they did that, but they, they said, oh, bad idea. We, the Department of Mines realized we can make earthquakes too. And, uh, you know, what, what I think is going to happen is the radiation isotopes are going to increase in density. And here's where I want to turn the question over to Tim. Tim, if they strike militarily, how likely is it they're going to strike the Bashir reactor? And what would be the consequences of hitting a large, older-styled 
designed in the 70s, large nuclear reactor with lots of fuel rods, etc., with a live bunker buster nuclear, literally completely cracked the reactor. Well, core. a whole lot of deaths, and that includes deaths going all the way into China, because we're at the, the immediate area. Yeah. you know, will be extremely the positions hot. for but positions for social responsibility calculated will out. Take it to the east northeast. Yeah, and that will literally take it all the way to China. And when I say take it, I'm talking about lots of deaths. Right. How likely is it that what will happen if they strike the uh, Bashir reactor, uh, Chris, with a you know bunker buster nukes, you know GB fifty four, you know to blast the uh, nuclear reactor core all the little bits? What'll happen? Oh, well, then you will have, uh, if they all have to use a bunker bus, for sure, you can expect core damage. And then I really right, and the core damage will be some yeah. catastrophic. Our physicians for social responsibility and our nuclear experts, because they've belonged to them for many years, yeah. have basically said this radiation cloud will cross Myanmar, which is, uh, it'll cross China, it'll cross the South China Sea, it'll cross uh, Korea, it'll cross over Japan, and then it'll head toward us. And we're going to get blasted with radiation if these morons do this. That's us and the Israelis planning on hitting a live nuclear reactor with nuclear weapons. And also their, all their so-called uh, storage sites with bunker buster nukes to hit them that are actually have underground centrifuges, which, you know, if it's down deep enough, it may not be a lot of local radiation, but there's going to be some. But hitting a live reactor, that's going to be very catastrophic. It'll also pull Russia and China into a full-force conflict. So hitting a live reactor will be... Okay, that's it. Nukes are flying. I just well, don't for, don't yeah. forget that the the Israelis have a a reactor uh, that's at the center of their nuclear industry, and it can also be hit. And uh, the Syrians have the uh, Alexander I, uh, the Icelander uh, in Russian missile, which virtually cannot be stopped by anything they have or we have. And it can pinpoint target um, their key reactor, Daymona. Yeah, yeah. And if that so, goes, basically most of Israel goes. You don't have to nuke you're, Israel. You just have to bomb their reactor. Now, uh, Chris, uh, have we had any progress on the nuclear site from JASCO in terms of the nuclear seismic testing in these reactors here in America? We're getting more of the updates. As they come well, but, but, in, uh, but getting them, does it mean that anything concrete is happening? Have they gone in and say, we're spending this no, money, we're going to fix concrete, this, we're going to fix that, and anywhere? You're talking about actually digging and doing, doing stuff. Yeah, no. Doing no, stuff. There's, no, there, there's so so there's hand wringing, there's reports right. of, we needed another report because this report doesn't look so good, so we better do another report. So basically, is it's like the Kachina dolls. This little right. Kachina doll doesn't look good, so we're going to put it inside another doll and make another doll inside the doll. So basically, we'll write another report on the report because the last one was scary enough that we should write another report. I will let you know when when I see a real design, a design change, and yeah. the amount of effort that it would take to do it, an actual you know, contract being released. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'll call it Countdown to AF, American Fukushima. <laughs> Countdown to AF. All we need is, we don't even need to have tsunami. But there are tsunami potentials. For example, Kumbo Viejo and the Azores. If that strikes the coastal of the United States, we're going to have a number of reactors that are going to go postal. Um, we, you know, some of that water can go up to one to three hundred miles inland if it's eight hundred feet high, which is what the nuclear uh, with tsunami experts in Zurich, Switzerland, and in here in Northern California at the Tsunami Research Center have found. So. Uh, not so good. And of course, if we attack Russia, Russia can set off Kumbra Viejo very easily. All they do is drop a conventional bomb or a small nuke and... Uh, here's the first thing go. news. Iran is deploying forces to uh, fight the Al-Qaeda militants in Iraq. Wow. Revolutionary Guard forces are going in to help the Iraqi troops. Well, that this means is the it's a trap for, for Iran that I've been talking about. I don't think they can avoid it, though. I think that uh, they now know that there's no choice. But our troops and our, our forces can't respond, and Obama will not have the military oomph to move forward. I think he's going to have a real problem with trying to get this authorized.